Hello, Sister Katana. Good afternoon, Father. Yes, afternoon. <laughs> we is are... this you and I? <laughs> yeah, we are. This is supposed to be like a, a parish Bible study. Ah, okay. Uh, so I decided to extend it to any lover of the scripture. Okay. But unfortunately, for the past few weeks now, no one has actually come. So this Sunday, I decided that, okay, since they are not coming in person, let me extend it to a platform. And still, the, post, the people are not there. <laughs> so, uh, what we're supposed to be looking at is uh, the book of Art of the Apostles. Okay. Yeah. So, I will just do a little bit of uh, introduction, and you and I could just spend like the next 30 minutes to look at the book. Okay, that's and, uh, fine. We just look at chapter one for today. Uh, then at least we would have done something. Uh, it's better than none. They say half yes. bread is better than none. That's true. Yeah. So as we know, the book is commonly called the Acts of the Apostles. But it does not focus, it does not discuss all of the apostles per se. Yeah. Uh, focus the first part of it focus on Peter, and the second part of it mostly Paul. But the book generally describes the spread of Christianity from its origins with Jews in Jerusalem to eventually include all people even in the capital city of the Roman Empire. The story is filled with drama, it's filled with miracles upon miracles, speeches at the beginning when we, we saw Peter giving a speech and over 3,000 persons were won into the faith. Yeah. And mostly the speeches were about the risen Christ. So the traditional name for this book, as I said, is called Acts of the Apostles. Yeah. But some, some authors, some scholars have said that uh, a more accurate name might, could have been a few out of a few of the apostles. Peter <laughs> <laughs> and Paul are particularly prominent uh, character in the Acts of the Apostles. So the Acts of the Apostles or the Acts of the Risen Jesus might also be an appropriate name for this book, as some scholars would have said. Acts of the Risen Jesus could have also been another name for this book. But the author of the book of uh, the Acts of the Apostles, that is Luke, the same person that wrote the the Gospel of Luke, the physician Luke tells us that his first book, that is the Gospel of Luke, was about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven. We read that in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1, verses 1 to 2. So him himself has already, since the first book was focused on Jesus, the okay. Gospel of Luke. I think it was more appropriate for him now to focus on how this Christianity began and what, and that is the essence of the art of the apostles. So art is the second volume of Luke's history. It's the second volumes of his book or what we call history writing project. It is about what Jesus did after his ascension into heaven. He directed and taught the apostles through the power of the Holy Spirit. We have been reading the Acts of the Apostles since we started uh, the Easter yes. season. Yeah. And as Jesus had promised, we read in the Gospel of John chapter 16, verse 7, and also chapter 13. 
sorry, mm -hmm. verse 13. He sent the spirit to guide the apostles after he returned to heaven. Ordinarily in the church, today is supposed to be the ascension. of ascension. But as we know, we, we have the option of moving it to Sunday in order to celebrate it with the wider community. Yeah. So I'm just trying to give a rundown of a view of this book. Then you and I probably will we'll move into the first chapter and see what the Lord is speaking to us. Okay. So since this book frequently reminds us that the actions of the apostles were inspired and guided by God's spirit, art of the Holy Spirit has also been suggested as, as a possible name for this book, art of the Holy Spirit. All of these could, I may not be out of place if the names were to be named that way. The first part of this book is about Peter, and going into the outline now, the structure of this book, the first part is of this book is about Peter. And the second part is about Paul, the converted Christian. This twofold division is of the simplest ways to divide the book of Acts, but it focuses on two men, tends to cover up some important aspect of Luke's story. Peter's ministry and Paul's are not separate stories. They are related to each other and they overlap in several chapters in the center of arts. Some Bible scholars have outlined the book geographically using a formula Jesus gave his disciples. You will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. We find out in Acts of the Apostles, chapter one, verse eight. Although Luke begins the story in Jerusalem, he does not stick to a precise geographical sequence. Philip's work in Samaria, as we read in Acts of the Apostles, chapter eight, verses five to 25, and is described before Peter's work in Judea, out of the apostles, chapter nine, verse 32 to 43. So there was no sequence. There were, Luke probably was just putting on the story as much as he could have remembered. Later, the story moves back and forth. It moves back and forth from Antioch to Jerusalem, from Europe back to Asia, back to Jerusalem, and so on and so forth. And the book ends with Paul in Rome, which was the center of the empire, not the ends of the earth. So geography is important to look, but it is not the only important framework for his story about the earliest years of Christianity. Luke also has ethnic interest. He especially wants to explain how Christianity moved from its Jewish foundations to spread to the Gentile world. Art can be divided into five major sections that combine some of Luke's emphasis as, I do not have the slide, I would have shown you this slide. This would have been very, very important tools. In fact, this summarizes everything that we'll be reading in the Acts of the Apostles. Now, without wasting time, I will skip all of these details since I do not have it in projected form. Let's look at chapter one. Okay. The church begins in Jerusalem, introductory event, promise of the Holy Spirit. We see that in chapter one, verse one to five. Let's open to the book. Yes, may, I have it. Yeah, you may want to read if you, yes. Okay. From verse one to five? Yes, read verse one to five. In the first part of my word, Theophilus, I wrote of all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he ascended to heaven. But first he had instructed through the Holy Spirit, the apostles he had chosen. After his passion, he presented himself to them, giving many signs that he was alive. Over a period of 40 days, he appeared to them and taught them concerning the kingdom of God 
once when he had been eating with them, he told them, do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the fulfillment of the father's promise about which I have spoken to you. John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit within a few days. Good. So that actually is a promise of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Luke begins this part of his history by reminding readers of his previous book. That was what we saw in the first part of my work, reminding us. Mm -hmm. That is the Gospel of Luke. Right. And he also made emphasis to the situation he had described at the end of that book. That is at the end of the Gospel of Luke. And Jesus suffered and died and was raised from the dead. How he appeared to his disciples and gave them a dramatic new understanding of the scriptures. And that is found in the last chapter of the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, verses 25 to 27, and verse 45. And Luke also made reference to the Old Testament. The Old Testament had not only predicted the Messiah and his suffering, but it also predicted that repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations. We found that in verse 47 of that same uh, gospel chapter. of Luke chapter 24. Very interesting book. Very interesting book. And all of these promises were fulfilled. The question is this, how could the disciples preach to all nations? Just imagining, how could we preach in the whole of St. Vincent? Mm -hmm. Have you thought of that before? Is it possible? Um, it's possible, but it's going to take a lot of work and a lot of trust on both behalf. Yeah, I've been thinking a lot these days. I think uh, I really need a personal secretary to help me to be putting these thoughts. Because sometimes, uh, <laughs> but event happening make me to think around what do we do? Because you see, too much of talking, no action. Yeah, yes, yes. So, like you see this child died, or people died, protests, uh, people died. They were just killed, coded blood. Yeah, people but, not talking and discussing yeah, how they feel. It. You know, they're bottling up everything and then when they can't take it anymore, they just explore. Yeah, yeah. So my question, how do we, just like Jesus talk about preaching, the, taking the gospel, mandating them to take the gospel to the whole world? How do we begin our whole world from St. Vincent? How do we evangelize the whole of St. Vincent, particularly yeah. as Catholic? How do we do that? Imagine if we all come together to think of what to do, not what yeah. should have been done, but what can we do? So the question is not what should be done or what should have been done that was not done. Or what they are not doing. The question should not be what are they are not doing. The question should be what, what are we do doing? We do? Yes, what do we do? How could the disciples preach to all nations? Though the gospel of Luke does not tell us, but it tells us that Jesus told the disciples to stay in the city until, until you have been clothed with the power from on high. We see that in verse nine, verse 49 of the Gospel of Luke. And what this and what is this power? And what is it for? This is where Acts picks, picks, picks it up. He picks up the story from that point. Jesus taught his disciples about the kingdom of God and told them to wait in Jerusalem for a special gift from God. That is what he just read in verse 4. Mm -hmm. Read it again if, if we may want to reflect on it. 
Verse 4. Yes. One, when he had been eaten with them, he told them, do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the fulfillment of the Father's promise about which I have spoken to you. You see that? Yes. Do you know, my sister, do you know that sometimes we are so eager to preach, to, to put up program, to put up event, but we are not eager to ask the Holy Spirit to yes. tell us exactly what we should do. Yeah. Jesus himself knew, he told them, wait until you receive the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you know that staging a program without asking God's divine direction can be risky? Yeah. You can take advantage of it. In anything any, in life, you know, Father, anything in life yeah. that we set out to do, and if we don't seek the wisdom of God, and rely on his answers. Correct. And we go out and do things on our own. You know, it's, yeah. it's always a lot of um, disheartening decisions that, that comes out of it. And, um, and you know it is not from God when you yeah. see, see yeah. hands are turning. But when you speak to God, you know, your heart is at rest and you know, Yes, this is the way. So in everything, we have to see his wisdom. We need to see. You see, sometimes I feel that we want to show. We want to show we are doing something. We have the desire to serve God. Yes. But we are not. What is the purpose of staging a program that my battery, let me just put my <laughs> What is the purpose of staging a program and you are not asking the Holy Spirit, first of all, to guide you before staging it? What yeah. is the purpose of we meeting on Sunday for masses when within the week we have not a lot of time to ask the Holy Spirit to tell them what they should be reflecting on this weekend? Mm -hmm. everyone is coming to church that is why we get people get disappointed when the homily is not good they say oh the, uh, the, the homily is not good the because homily will not be good when we are not prepared and if we don't come with anything yeah when the people of God do not prepare yeah we not even know when the homily is good or not because being emotional sometimes we can be emotional in preaching but we may not be giving the message. Yeah. The message may not be preached, but because we are so emotional or we may be so eloquent in our speech, a person will say, oh, this homily was good. <laughs> I remember one time, I think sometime last year or so, I did a preaching somewhere and someone met me and said, oh, it was a lovely preaching. I love it. Good. Mm -hmm. And as my nature, I kindly ask this person, please. What is good? What exactly did I talk about? <laughs> it was during online worship, online mass. And you know what the person told me? Oh, actually, I have to go back to watch that video again. I was cooking when, when I was listening to it. I didn't really pay attention. <laughs> but that person... Obviously, we say he att she, she attended mass. Yes. But why that person desire to listen to the word of God? Why that person desire to serve God? Mm -hmm. The person is not doing it in the right way because he has not heard from the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. If you have heard from the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will tell you what to do. Yes. It's very yes. important. So people come to Sunday mass without preparing for Sunday mass. Mm -hmm. When they come to church, they can easily be bored. Because yeah. when you have read the three readings, three readings, three powerful readings, you must have a message. It's just like a student preparing for class. Yeah. When you prepare for class as a student, you have questions to ask the teacher. Yeah. And even if the teacher did not teach the way you wanted, you will not be going home empty. 
In fact, mm -hmm. when you have prepared, it helps you to understand the lesson. It helps you to ask questions. Yeah. So a lot of Catholics need to go back to the drawing board and remember what Jesus said. Remain in Jerusalem until you receive this special gift from God. And now let's look at what verse 5 says. In a few days, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Verse 5. Yes. Read it again. Just read that verse 5. few days, John. John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit within a few days. Within a few days. Jesus assured, this was the assurance. He picked it up from where he, end, he ended the message in the Gospel of Luke. Remember when Jesus was ascending into heaven, he told them, remain in Jerusalem. And in a few days, you will receive the power of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And that few days only lasted for nine days. Between Ascension and Pentecost, and Pentecost. it's nine days. And that is why we as Catholics, you will know we are blessed. We are blessed in the sense that we have this novena and that was the origin of novena. Uh, so let's look at, let's look at Jesus ascends to heaven. Acts of the Apostles is recorded chapter one, verse six to 11. Let's look at six to 11. Six to 11. Yes. Okay. When they had come together, they asked him, is it now that you will restore the kingdom of Israel? And he answered, it is not for you to know the time and the steps that the father has fixed by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria, even to the ends of the earth. Mm -hmm. up to where are we going yes 11 okay after jesus said this he was taken up before their eyes and a cloud held him from their sight while they were still looking up to heaven where he went suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them and said men of galilee why do you stand here looking up at the sky this Jesus, who has been taken from you into heaven, will return in the same way as you have seen him go there. Hmm. See, <laughs> the disciples had much to learn. Yes. They have a lot to learn. And so, although Jesus so do we. told them about yes. God's kingdom, yes. their final question to Jesus, this was one of their final questions to Jesus. The final question to Jesus was about the kingdom. But they asked from a Jewish perspective, leaving the Gentiles out of the picture, as we yeah. see in verse 6. When they had come together, they asked him, is it now that you will restore the kingdom of Israel? They didn't ask about the Gentiles. They were asking about, they were so smart. Yes. Yeah. The disciples' choice of words indicates that they had forgotten about preaching forgiveness to all nations. Instead, they wanted the Messiah to bring glory and power to the Jewish people living in the land of Israel. Yeah. This had been the Jewish hope for centuries, but the Jewish nation was not yet ready for the leader God had chosen. Mm -hmm. They rejected him and killed him. And as art shows, most Jews continue to reject him even after his resurrection. Many Jewish people do not believe in God. They do not, sorry, they do not believe in Jesus Christ up to date. Yeah. They do not believe in Jesus Christ up to date. So a national kingdom was not the kind of kingdom that Jesus wanted his disciples to preach about. So Jesus did not answer their question. If you notice, he did not You're answer right. their question. Yeah. Instead, Jesus reminded them of the promise and the prophecy as we read in verse 8. Read verse 8 again. Okay, let me just get back there. 
verse 8. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Okay. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria, okay. even to the ends of the earth. Correct. So it's That's everywhere, it. not just everywhere. one, so not just told one them. spot. Correct. Yeah. He told them, wait, wait, yes. don't be in a hurry. Don't be in a hurry. Sometimes when we get a message, yes. we are too in a hurry to, to deliver. To deliver. Yes. Wait. Sometimes yes. when I have the message from God, I have to be sure that this is what the Lord is saying. Yes. We have to, we have to, de we have to discern. Wait and discern. discern. And that is why the Catholic Church do not just ordain its priests. Like yes. we in Nigeria, you have to spend at least 10 years. At least 10 years. Discerning, discerning, studying, yes. praying, doing all kinds of apostolic work and all of that. So we have to listen. Yeah, he stated it clearly. The power from God is the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the disciples who were witnesses of Jesus' ministry were to carry the message throughout the world. Amen. So Jesus had given them a mission. That's Just as he had done twice before, before then. We found that in Luke chapter 9, verse 1, and also chapter 10, verse 1. They were to be a witness for Jesus, not for any other person, but for Jesus. Mm -hmm. To preach about him, his resurrection, and the fact that repentance and forgiveness can be obtained through him. But the gospel could not go to all the world while Jesus was physically on earth. I reflected the other day at mass. I reflected the other day at mass why Jesus had to go. The work of Jesus was completed and was not completed. Mm -hmm. The work was done, but not done. The work was done in the sense that he has accomplished all that he wanted to accomplish. That was to redeem us through suffering, through death. The work was not done because if Jesus was physically present, his work of evangelization, of reaching the whole world would be limited. Even if Jesus were to bilocate, he could only bilocate to limited places at, at a certain time. So for him to be able to go to the whole world, there was need for him to go and send. He said, the Holy Spirit, my father will send, will be sent in my name. He will be sent in my name. That is why today, anywhere we are, we can invoke the power of the Holy Spirit. Anywhere we are, we can call upon Jesus. Mm -hmm. We can call upon God. Because yeah. God is spirit. is everywhere. Yes. Everywhere. His physical presence would have been, would have limited his message. Would have limited his message. So Jesus did not want to limit this message. Because as long as he remained, he would be the primary preacher. The apostles would not dominate him. He has to leave for, the, for him to empower them to take the message out. He would be a ge geographical focus. People would focus on him. Jesus wanted to delegate more responsibility to the disciples. Another reason why he had to leave. He wanted to enable them to be the teachers. He wanted not for God to be with them, but in them. Do you know division of labor is very important? Yes. A priest cannot run the parish alone. No. A principal cannot run the school alone. He needs the teacher. Mm -hmm. Today I was preaching, I was at, uh, I was at the Pram, uh, St. Mary's Roman Catholic graduation. graduation. It was yes. so beautiful. In fact, if I have opportunity, the teachers at the primary school level do more work than us in secondary school. Let me be honest with you. <laughs> I have worked in primary school for many years. Before moving to secondary school, I discover the work in primary school is difficult. Uh -huh. I'm telling you, kindergarten, that class they call kindergarten. Mm -hmm. yeah. Play class is so yeah. hard. But you see, Teachers at the primary school receive the least salary. Most, times, most of them receive the least salary, but they do most of the great job they do. Great foundation delay. Mm -hmm. 
the lay, great foundation. But you know, the foundation is be built upon, you know, it will do a great job, a great job. So you see that the presence of Jesus could have limited the mission, but Jesus extended it by departing to help the disciples to come out of their shell. And after God began to live in the disciples, they would be able to go into all the world with the knowledge that God would always be with them. Amen. Helping them understand the scriptures and the mission. Helping yes. them through physical difficulties, energizing them in their work. Yes. This is what the Holy Spirit comes to do in our lives. When we receive the Holy Spirit, it empowers us. It yes. empowers us to go out and spread the good news. Amen. So Christ's answer focuses our thoughts on other people. Instead of dwelling on the physical things we want, we should focus on the spiritual blessings we have already been given. Amen. Disciples were simply left with the command to stay in Jerusalem until they receive the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. That is, and they were able to listen to the whole, listen to Jesus' instruction. And that helped them. And that helped them to be able to live out the message. Mm -hmm. We who have been given the Holy Spirit, there is every need for us to share the good news of salvation. That people of all nations can become part of the people of God through faith, through repentance. Faith is very important. A lot of persons could have received the faith, but they have not repented. Sure. A lot of persons could have repented, but they have not forgiven their brothers and sisters. Forgiveness is one of the tools of the things the Holy Spirit comes to do in our life. A person who has received the Holy Spirit freely forgive. A person who has received the Holy Spirit truly have repented. A person who has received the Holy Spirit will do a lot of great wonders. My sister, the word of God is so rich. Yes, it is. The word of God, I'm telling you, is so rich and powerful. So rich and powerful. Mm -hmm. so we may stop here for today and reflect on the other part of the scripture. Uh, this book is very good. It is. It but is. If I must recommend to anyone who just joining the faith or who just becoming a Christian, I would say the person should begin by reading the gospel okay. and hand by hand with the Acts of the Apostles. Yes. Very powerful. Very powerful. That is where to begin. Mm. I thank you, sister, for coming and joining me. I would have just been here alone. <laughs> You're welcome. Tani is here too. Tani. Oh, there's Tani someone is there. Also there. <laughs> oh, it's Tani. Tani. Yeah, it's Tani. Tani. Good night, Tani. Good night. Oh, Tani. <laughs> you are such a blessed soul. You know? I didn't know you have been listening to me. Oh, thank you for That's coming. Fine. She was a silent participant. Yeah. You are just listening to me. Yeah, she's a silent participant. Oh, yeah. Very good. In fact, I love the scripture. I love the word of God. Um, yes. I love the word of God. I pray that God will help us. Let us yes. think about what to do. And I need your advice. I need your suggestion. How do we spread the gospel do you know there is a new church in St. Vincent? I saw them online. Oh, it's really? An online church pulling people from online to the physical. Yes. That's the, that's the, remember I mentioned that my aunt has joined this church online. Pardon? I, Father, I think I mentioned to you that, that my aunt, I, I think so, my aunt joined this church online. I don't know. I, I, I saw some Catholic too. signing up for it. Wow. Yes. I follow them online because I, I've been monitoring what they're doing. Oh. Do you know that they have three churches in three locations? Okay, in St. Vincent? St. Vincent. Today they posted. Wow. If you want to become a Christian, join us in our church. And wow. people posted, ask question, where is your location? So it's a good thing. It's a good thing that they are spreading the good news. That yeah. is a strategic act. We as Catholic in St. Vincent, what do we do? Please. 
yeah. I just I need I need I I need suggestion because the Lord wants us to evangelize. He wants us to to suppress the kingdom of darkness in Saint Vincent. What do we do? Anytime you are inspired, just send me a message on what we can do. Okay. You know, when I saw the, I was discussing with Mr. Greg, when I saw the flyer the last time, the, the letter from the, from the uh, Christian Council, uh -huh. I wanted to, in fact, I don't know why I didn't go on with that plan. I wanted to stage a crusade or a rally in different locations. Oh. Pulling up the protest of teachers. I wanted to do a crusade format. Okay. There's so many things. I don't know. I need persons to volunteer. We go to, to different places. Instead of protesting, mm -hmm. let us go take the word of God. A lot of people need to change. Yes. If that man out there who is molesting a woman change, mm -hmm. certainly he knows, he or she knows that what he's doing is wrong. But mm -hmm. you know what? Protesting hard in their heart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Protesting hard in their heart. But when we go with the message of salvation, we soften their heart. They'll be able to their conscience. Yeah, their conscience. They're able to drop. They are, they are gone. They're able to drop their pride. Only the Holy Spirit could do that. I'm telling you, without the Holy Spirit, we'll make mistakes. We'll make and, mistake. and that's why, Father, it comes back to what we were just saying. You know, even though we get a message within our hearts, it's not just to rush out there and right. act, right. but to pray, discern, right. and listen, and seek the wisdom of God. Right. And once you do that, and everything is settled in your heart. You must know when it's the Holy Spirit right. that's leading you because you have already invited the Holy Spirit and mm. seek the wisdom from him. Mm. You know, it's not everything mm. that we get in our spirit. We just go and babble and All just, right. you know, we need to discern it first, sit with it. And then the Lord will lead us where yeah. we need to be. Yeah. And give us the words. Yeah, I've been praying about it. Since I saw that uh, protest, I was uh, reflecting. I said, God, I noted it down. And uh, I got some idea from Mr. Greg and some other persons, places where we could stage either for three days or three nights or for nine nights, just evangelize. And I'm, I've been praying about it. So I want to ask you all to join me to pray. And let me know in due time what the spirit is telling you to do because yeah. we can't just remain quiet. No, no. And continue to pray in the church. No, that's not enough. We need to go out there and mm -hmm. help souls, help people yeah. to find their faith. Mm -hmm. so thank you all for coming. And I pray that the good Lord will, will continue to bless each one of you. Yes, Father. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Let us pray before we go. Let us pray. Okay, Father. The Lord be with you. And, and with you. your spirit. Heavenly Father, Lord, I want to thank you for this opportunity to share your word. Yes, Lord. I want to thank you for this opportunity to reflect on your word. Yes, this is your word, it's not ours. We ask you to help us to continue to discern your will in our lives. In a special way, I want to ask you to bless our sisters, Katana and Tani. Yes, These faithful daughters of yours who have always been committed. Lord, I ask you to bless them for this time they have come to spend in dwelling, in sharing this word of God. May God help you. May God strengthen you. May God guide you. May God be your light, be your guide in, at all times. I pray for all our brothers and sisters out there, yes. those who would have loved to be here but they couldn't make it, that God will strengthen them, God will bless them. Yes. In a special way, I want to pray for our Catholic church in this diocese, Yes. Want to pray for our bishop, want to pray for all our priests, want to pray for all our members that each one of us will become agent of change and agent of evangelization. Thank you, Heavenly Father, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank, Thank you, you, King of Kings. Thank you for everything you've been doing in our lives. And may the blessings of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit come down upon each one of you, none and always through Christ our Lord. 
Amen. 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 Thank you so much. You're welcome, Father. All the glory belongs to God. Yeah. <coughs> Good night.